here tonight to perform spoken word poetry about how Curtis has impacted his life and mental health. So please join me in welcoming Grace and Kate. When we scream, this is our song, every time the DJ changes the music and our hearts beat in time with Lady Gaga, mm. tonight we will know, just being here together is resistance. But still, I am measuring my safety in every pair of blendstones and every flannel shirt in line. Still, there are evangelists on every street corner of White Avenue telling us the only dance floors that belong to us are the ones in hell. Like the only reason we exist is to die. Any news story about queer people will tell you the same thing. A girl in line tells me she recognizes me from a poetry reading, asks why I was the only poet at the event featuring queer poets who didn't read a single poem about being gay. I don't know how to tell her about the poem I wrote. The night my boyfriend and I tried to plan a vacation and I broke down crying, thinking about a story I read in the news earlier that week, about a gay couple killed on the beach during their honeymoon in Mexico. I don't know how to tell her about the poem I wrote, the night I wouldn't let my partner hold my hand in the elevator of our apartment building in case the wrong person saw us get off on the seventh floor. I don't know how to tell her about the poem I wrote, the night my friend told me she was moving to Florida, and I imagined her bodies, one of the bodies found in Pulse nightclub the morning of my 18th birthday, the night I learned to make notes of all of the emergency exits every time I walked into a bar in case the wrong person saw me by my boyfriend a drink. I don't know how to tell her about the first time I wrote a love poem about my boyfriend. How every time I've tried to read it, I think back to all of the conversations I've had where I've lied about who I am and how I love for my own safety. I don't know how to tell her about my boyfriend. How I've never known something as beautiful as our love, but how I'm still scared to hold his hand in public. When was I taught that my own love is something I should fear? I tell her, I knew all the other poets would be reading poems about being queer, so I wanted to read something else. I don't tell her, on the days I can bear to face myself in the mirror, I practice making myself look straight, even in the bathroom in the gay bar. When I leave, I don't tell her the safe space signs will be taken down in the morning, because we are only safe here when we act as prophet. I don't tell her I went to high school with the bartender downstairs, and in the 11th grade, he asked our math teacher to assign him to a different seat so he didn't have to be so close to a queer person. When I leave, I tell her to have a good night. I tell her that there are two exits on the main floor. I tell her that the door to the rooftop opens on the bottom left-hand side. She smiles, says thanks for the tip. I know she doesn't understand why I'm telling her this. I write this poem, hoping this is something she never has to understand. Um, is it making like weird sounds on no. the spot? No. Okay. Uh, before I read this next one, both of the poems that I'm writing are about like how queerness has impacted my mental health and also just how I live in the world. But I also want to say that I experience a lot of privilege being white and also passing as male even though I'm queer and trans and that other people do not have those privileges. Um, so even though these poems are like, talking about things that are hard, I do know that uh, I hold a lot of privileges in those areas and that privilege is something that uh, I need to use and we all need to use to advocate for others and make spaces more safe. Um, this poem is about being trans, that's all I'm going to say. I'm writing you this now to tell you that I'm sorry you will spend so much of your life feeling like a ghost in your own body. I'm sorry that I was the one who gave you the sheet to hide yourself under. I'm writing you this now to tell you that someday you will no longer feel like something you are taught to be scared of. 
I am writing you this now to remind you of the day you fell off of your bike and scraped your knee and you literally thought you were going to die because you're a Gemini and a middle child and tend to be a little dramatic. We hope that was the worst pain you would ever have to endure. I'm writing to tell you that I'm sorry it wasn't. I'm sorry that sometimes the pain won't make you scared to die, sometimes it will make you scared to live. But I'm writing you this now to tell you that someday you will no longer have to open up your palms to check and see if your lifelines are still there. Someday you will recognize the strength and how much your body has been able to hold. You monkey bar champion. I know that the weight of a body that feels like nothing more than a burden can be so hard to carry. I am writing you this now to tell you that someday the body you often can't stand to look at will start to feel like home. I am writing you this now to tell you you never should have had to learn that your body was anything other than home. I am writing you this now to tell you that someday you will feel like a burden more often than you don't and that isn't something you'll be able to brush off the way you can brush the knots out of your hair but someday you'll never have to brush your hair again. But at first you'll be scared of cutting off the thing you let yourself yourself hide under, but when that day comes, you will no longer feel like you need to hide. I am writing you this now, to remind you of all of the afternoons spent running through fields with your little sister, how you never thought twice about taking up all of that space. I am writing you this now to tell you, all of the space you want to take up is yours to hold. Even if someday you start smiling at people every time you walk into a public bathroom to show them that they don't need to be scared of you. I'm writing to tell you that space belongs to you. Your smile belongs to you. You do not have to give it to anyone who is going to try to take it away. I'm writing you this now to tell you that someday you will look in a mirror and that smile will not leave your face. Someday you will speak and finally recognize your voice as your own. You will find so much comfort in those awkward second puberty-induced voice cracks. Someday you will finally learn the words for the things you've known about yourself for your whole life. I'm writing to tell you, there are so many times you will arrive at these words and pretend you did not hear them because that seems like the easier option. I'm writing to tell you that someday, your grandmother will see a trans person on TV and tell you that that is something she doesn't think she could ever handle. And you will start to believe that who you are is too much for your family to handle. I'm writing to tell you that that is not true. Someday, your grandmother's friend will meet you and say this must be your granddaughter and your grandma will introduce you as her grandson and point out the five facial hairs you've been able to grow after eight months on testosterone and convince her friend she is losing her eyesight with old age someday. You won't have to tell your, you won't have to lie and tell your mother you don't want to wear a dress because the tights make your legs itchy. Someday, your mother will buy you your first suit for your high school graduation and your sister will buy a dress to match. And now she will complain about how the tights make your legs itchy, but she is so happy to have a brother like you. This is the first time she will call you her brother, and you will both agree that nothing has ever felt more right. I am writing this to tell you that there isn't a day that goes by where I don't think of you. I am writing this to tell you that I am sorry if I ever made you feel like our body was something you should not be proud to carry. I promise you were never the thing I was trying to hide. I am writing you this now to tell you. I am sorry for all of the times I made our skin hard under the weight of feeling like we were not allowed to feel anything but shame. I am writing to thank you for letting us feel something other than shame, for reminding me to move gently through the world even when it keeps finding new ways to tell me it does not want us to exist. I am writing this to thank you for all of the things we did not become and all of the things we did and all of the things I know we are still going to become together. Thank you.